In this video I'm going to show you how I install my steel siding and some of those details. I'll also show the few different tools that I use to cut the steel siding and what I found that works the best. I'll also show you how I trimmed around my windows some of those details. So keep watching. So on this I'm just using uh, one inch screws because I don't have any insulation behind my siding against my purlin so it's straight onto the wood and then I have my Bosch drill set at about 10 on the clutch that seems to be about right right now and I don't think you'd want to use the impact driver for this um, the drill seems to work the best well if you're gonna use a base trim what I did is I put all these panels up first and I left the bottom roll of screws out and then I just fit this up in there and then I'll screw it off. If you didn't want to use the base trim, using these foam closure strips on the bottom would work pretty good too at keeping insects and critters out. So I'm doing that on the back side under my lean-to just because of the concrete I have poured already I thought it would just be easier and look better just to do it this way. I've got my stack here. This is for that end of the barn. It's 32 feet deep. So there's 10 sheets here that'll get me to 30 and then I got one more sheet there so that one's got to get ripped. But this stack I'm going to, I've marked all my holes for screws and I'm going to punch them so the screw starts easy and let me look at it from so this would be the bottom and you can see here that this lip is a little shorter than the other side and this is the overlap side see this lip comes all the way down and curls back up right there whereas this lip here it doesn't curl it's a little bit shorter and then also there's what's called the drain channel right here so this little valley right there is a little deeper than the rest of them so when when this end overlaps this there's it leaves a little airspace in there so the water can't siphon up and over uh, not that important on the sidewalls but really important on a roof this side gets overlapped so as far as my screws what I'm gonna do is put them in the flats one there one there there and there then this end will be a little loose until the next sheet gets overlapped and then it'll get screwed over here so what I have is a nail punch. I'm gonna punch that screw location instead of drilling it. So when you drill it, you're gonna leave a, some bare metal that could start rusting. And then I'll do that for all my screw holes. So I found that if you're just going to make a straight cut across the panel, that these big shears are both the easiest and quickest way to do it. To rip a sheet lengthwise, these air shears work much better than the hand shears. There wasn't enough flex in the sheet. And then when you got a notch out for a window, I used an air nibbler to go across. And I did that so I can make a little bit of a hole in the corner to get the shear started to go the other way. The nibbler is just real slow. So you can see that those shears worked a lot faster. I considered house wrapping the whole barn but decided that I didn't think it was really worth the expense to do so. 
I had a lot of this uh, synthetic rift felt left over. So I really just wanted to protect around my window openings in case any water did get behind the steel siding in those areas. So I just put that up where the windows were and then I would trim it out just like I would with house wrap on a house. So then I just installed the window like you would on, you know, any building. Just leveled it off, nailed the flange off all the way around. Then I used the sticky window flashing material and I sealed it off all the way around. Use a piece of drip edge first on top of the window to help direct any water that would get behind the siding. There was so much wind noise in this recording that I'm just going to have to voice over it. Here I am just explaining how I use that drip edge and then I started with the J channel along the left side of the window and I don't know if you could see but I, I made a miter cut at the bottom of it and then this piece is notched out and it goes behind that miter cut so it looks like a nice mitered finished corner. And then I stick the next piece down below and then I put that piece up above the window first and then I'll slide the J channel all the way across it and I've made a little tab on the end of that J it'll fold down into the J channel on the left and it also has that nice mitered corner on both sides so it makes for a nice finished mitered corner like a picture frame corner this is the hardest piece to put in you can see that I uh, I think I added a screw here just to kind of hold it so it wouldn't fall. Here I am. Put that screw there just to hold it there so I could get back up and get it worked in. And just about every sheet I just double check it with the level just to make sure I'm not off. You want to make sure you end up with every sheet nice and plumb. I will have another video coming out of how I trim the garage doors. Subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching. And leave me a comment. Let me know what you think of this color.